Hey, a pleasure. Good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Jeff Burke, and this is going to be a Philadelphia Phillies trade deadline preview, AL East Pitching Edition. We're going to go over pitchers, or not AL East, excuse me, American League Pitchers Edition. We're going to go over pitchers that they could pick from the American League team that are looking to probably trade some guys because they're either out of the race for the division or really not going to be ultra competitive of a wild card team. The reason I said AL East by accident is because that's the division we will start with as we go to the bottom feeder. Baltimore Orioles, who really just have relief pitchers you could pick up. Paul Fry is a lefty I've liked since he's come up. He has a very good K to uh, walk ratio at 46 to 17, a 119 whip, and someone that it seems like if you bring him into a good uh, winning culture, a team that's right around 500 that's trying to make a spark in the second half, he might be able to really turn it on for you. And already, even at those numbers, you're getting solid bullpen numbers. And then Cole Sulcer, who's um, emerged at his age 31 season, is having a heck of a season for them. That would be a good pickup. And then if you could get the young reliever, if they actually wanted to move him, uh, Tyler Wells would obviously be a very smart pickup for them, having a 55-9K to K to walk ratio. He's striking out people like the win, a .94 whip. He would be a very good pickup, but I'm not sure if they're going to look to trade a relief pitcher that just emerged and is only in his mid-20s. Um, when it comes to the Toronto Blue Jays, they're a team that's still in it, but they're they're in it, but they're not necessarily probably going to keep pace with the Tampa Bay Rays and Boston Red Sox. So it depends how competitive they think they're going to really be when all push comes to snub in the wild card race because they got a starting pitcher you could go after in Steven Matchos an eighty four to twenty one uh, K to walk a four four three. So ZRA came up a bit, but he's still eight and four with a one thirty three whip, and he's staying healthy this year, which is the key knock on wood, but. That continues to happen. This could be the season he starts to kind of reshape it, get himself going, and then he really takes off. Next year, he's only 30, so you could probably have him for a couple years if you bring him in, and he does well. Tim Miza is not a bad lefty relief pitcher as well. Uh, he has a little bit of a higher ERA this year, but has had some success in the past. Getting people out, and then the last guy I would say um from their team unless if you're actually able to get I don't see them trading this guy in a million years if you could somehow get Jordan Romano he's a very good relief pitcher that would be very nice a 193 ERA a very good uh, K to walk ratio but Trevor Richards as a starting pitcher would be a good pickup as well he's only 28 he's starting to emerge again he looked to have some success early on with the Marlins then kind of got thrown out of the flock there and then was in Tampa Bay. Now he's in Toronto and actually had success there. So maybe he's a guy you would look to add. That would be kind of a guy you don't expect a lot from, but then maybe flourishes and really becomes a big part of your run, just like you got from Joe Bland. You expect him to be a good guy that chipped in, and then he actually became a very big part of that run. Now, when it comes to the AL Central, they got a lot of potential options here because if you go to the Kansas City Royals, you, of course, have Danny Duffy that um has a currently has a forearm injury but if he's back by the deadline or somebody that's going to be cleared by the deadline then you would still be able to trade for him and he's actually pitching really well this year to a 251 65 strikeout to only 21 walks um one of my favorite relief pitchers that emerged in baseball in the last year and a half or so is Scott Barlow as he's really pitched really well since coming up for Kansas City, he would be a fun guy to get. Um, he has a 282, 61 Ks to 19 um, balls, and he has a 130 whip and is really pitched really well in 44 innings. So he's a guy, if you're able to get him, he's also, I believe, only 28 himself. Yes, he's 28 himself. So he would be a nice guy to have and have for potentially quite a few years out of your bullpen there as well. And then you, of course, this is a guy you would have to hope he's still – Pitching well, K to walks ratio 108 to 34, but he's just not pitching well ERA wise. This is a guy you would really be taking your chances on, but you could probably get this guy maybe even for a player to be named later with how he's pitching um, still well in some of the inner numbers like the K to walks ratio, but not good in the ERA and the whip is Mike Miner. You might be able to get him for cheap and maybe he'll get going if you got him on your team, but that's a lot more of a big if. And then Josh Stallmount. Or Stallmont is also a pretty good relief pitcher. I would say you could claim from that team and get in a trade who has a 41 to 17 and then a 131 whip and a 360 ADRA. He's not too bad of a cap. But you also, the key with this is whenever we bring in pitchers, you have to 
learn how to gel with them and learn how to coach them well. That was a problem. Workman was good in Boston and now is doing all right again. Uh, Heath Hembray was good in Boston and then all of a sudden sucked here. Um, all of a sudden, Nick Vincent is pitching half decent again this year when he did nothing here. So you have guys that have, keep having success elsewhere that didn't have success here. The Red Sox made Pavetta look half decent. So you have to be able to figure out whatever that glitch is in the system that is only helping certain pitchers and not helping the vast majority of them because that's going to be an issue that's ongoing no matter who you trade for if you can't figure out what that glitch in the system is. Now, when it comes to the Twins, they seem like they're going to be down or out this down and out this year. Excuse me, a guy you could probably get fairly easier than you would expect, just because he's not as efficient this year as Alex Colomay. He shouldn't be that hard to trade for his reliever. He has a mid four ERA, but a guy that you could probably focus on. Uh, he does walk a few people though, which I would like to see him get down. But Tyler Duffy's a solid relief pitcher you could go to from there. And then if you want to go to a um, starter from their team, you could probably get Kane Tomato. That would kind of be like a bland pickup mid four ERA, hoping he can kind of get going and turn it on more. He would be a half decent pickup from their team as well. And then if you want another lefty, uh, K's to walk ratio, he's great. If he can just get his ERA down a little bit more, he could be a very consistent um, left hander out there. It would be Caleb Thalbar, might be a guy you could go after as well. And so that would be the guy um, from that team. From the Detroit Tigers, this is an interesting team because Tyler Boyd's out on the 10-day, or Matt Boyd, excuse me, is out on the 10-day DL with a triceps injury. So it's the same thing as Duffy. If he's able to come back and be cleared, you could trade for him and you would have a pretty solid lefty they could have on your team for a few years. Another guy that doesn't walk a lot of guys just like Duffy, not as much of a strikeout guy, but has 56 to 19 and really pitches well within the zone, mixing it up throughout the strike zone. So you could definitely um, go grab somebody like him. When it comes to their team out of the pen, oh, and they also have a guy that's a veteran that would really be similar to the Joe Bland pickup as a starting pitcher and Willie Peralta, my good buddy. Um, Zach brought that up to me where that would be exactly like the uh, Joe Bland pickup, just getting a guy that's a veteran that's kind of been around the league, has been nothing special his career, but just uh, has competed as a pitcher and then having him fit into your rotation seamlessly. So that would pretty much work right into what that move was. And then a guy that seems to be in a lot of people's trade rumors for a lefty is Gregory Soto. So I would say he's another guy, a good throwing left-hander that has a good breaking ball. He's a guy that I would look at from their team. Now the Indians, they're in second, but they've won a two-game losing streak, been 5-5 five five in the last 10. They've been pretty inconsistent this year. And their team that I don't think is going to be with their roster and their inconsistency on both ends and their injury issues on both ends. Very good um, when it comes to being competitive in a wild card race and getting deep into the playoffs. It would have to be a surprise team for me more than a team that I would expect to be able to actually surprise people. So I would say if Savali is the same thing we just mentioned with these last two guys, a minor and Duffy, or not minor and Duffy, um, Duffy and... Um, Duffy and um, what's his name, Matthew Boyd, um, but if you want to get Aaron Savali and he's cleared, that will be a very good pickup, he's a very good guy that controls the strike zone really well, really limits the walks, and really knows how to win ball games, he already has 10 this year, so he would be a very good pickup, obviously getting um, Dan Plesak's nephew, Zach Plesak, he would be a very nice pickup as a mid-4 ZRA this year, not as consistent this year, but still only has 12 walks in the season of 45 strike. I still a 102 whip. Um, so it looks like he's going to be able to bring down that ERA if you look at the rest of his stats. And then Cal Quantrill is a younger guy. I don't think they'll look to move him. They got him in a trade last offseason, but maybe that would be somebody you could get as well. As for out of the pen, Brian Shaw would definitely be a veteran if they're willing to move him. I would be looking for to potentially get. And then Nick Whitgreen really limits the walks well. Uh, he's a righty that you might be able to get as a veteran that will pitch uh, pretty well for you as well. And also, um, they have another example of a guy that didn't pitch well at the Phillies that all of a sudden now is doing well for his career, 240 ERA. I'm not sure if I'd trade for him back because I could see him struggling again here since he didn't gel well with our pitching style before. Maybe it's changed with Parker in 15 innings due to some of their injuries, is actually pitched well for Cleveland. So that's another example of how there's just some glitch in the system they have to fix where it works for some guys but doesn't work for the majority of people, it seems, with our team.
And then when you go to the White Sox, the White Sox are one of the best teams in baseball. They're a team that's going to be very competitive. I don't see them moving anybody. Um, when it comes to the top two teams in the AL West, I don't see them moving any pitching. When it comes to the Mariners, they're a competitive team, but they're a team that also, of course, with the market share, if they can get something they think is a good trade, good asset for a guy that's a good, maybe younger assets they can bring in and then save the money on having to pay him or continue to pay somebody, they're definitely not a team that would be opposed to do that. Like, um, For example, I'm sure they would obviously hear um, feelings on maybe seeing what people would offer for now he's starting to emerge as a 30-year-old uh, Yusei Kikuchi. Now, he's a guy that would be probably, you would have to give him a good biff for since he's pitching pretty consistent this year, but imagine if you could bring him into a rotation and he keeps pitching like he is and keeps getting better and is, really seems like he's starting to come to his own for what he was projected when he first came over here. It's a different league overseas compared to here. It's taken him a couple of years to adjust now. It looks like he's starting to get it going, and kudos to him. Um... For their team, though, when it comes to the rest of the guys, you really have a lot of starters injured, so you're not going to go uh, for anybody else other than the aforementioned, really. And then Drew Steckenrider out of the bullpen will be a great pitcher, a 2 ERA, a 40-11 to 11, a ball to strikeout ratio, um, and then a .94 whip. So he's a very good guy to pick up, in my opinion, as well as Paul Sewell, 48 to 10 in K's to balls ratio, a 257 ERA. So I would say those guys are good to pick up when it comes to your starting pitching. It's really mostly just Kikuchi on that team. And then Kendall Graveman has also become a very good reliever. So if you want to get him, uh, now he's turned into a great reliever this year from being a former starting pitcher. You could get him, but the big chance guy from their team, because he also has tenure on his contract, would be Marco Gonzalez, where I don't necessarily see us touching him. That's a big risk. Um, could be a high reward, but it's a big risk, high reward thing. Not a low risk, so I don't necessarily see them touching him. When it comes to the Angels... There's a guy that I've always thought has more in the tank than he's shown on this Angels team, basically since he's been there, and that is Andrew Heaney. Andrew Heaney is struggling just like Marco Gonzalez this year. He doesn't have as much tenure, though. I believe he's up after this or next season. So you don't have as much tenure. He does have a 5 5 6 ERA, but he does strike out some people with his curveball. He is still 5-7, a 1-3-6, 98 to 96 baseball. I, he doesn't have the surface stats that would go, yes, I want you to acquire this guy. But he has the pitching movement, the RPMs. He has the kind of inner stat and the potential ability to say, maybe this is an out-of-the-box guy you wouldn't consider getting, that you could actually turn into something and he can turn on the Jets in a new change of scenery. But... To, to actually get a guy that would also compare to Joe Blaine, that's more of a run-of-the-mill guy that's just developed into a very solid, uh, again, this year, seems like bottom of the rotation piece, would be Alex Cobb. 80-25, to 25, K's to baseball, um, is 7-3 and three this year, pitching a hell of a season at a 3.96 ERA. So uh, he would definitely be that. And then if you come to the relief pitching um, sector here, they don't necessarily have... The most people, unless if the Phillies want to go get somebody they should have kept in spring training anyway, in Tony Watson, uh, you could do that. Or you could potentially pick up the side arm or sidewinder Steve C. Check. So you have those options there. But other than that, I would just say the Angels is pretty much what we just laid out. Those are the potential guys they could get from that team. Unless if you want to take on a struggling Dylan Bundy and hope he can start figuring it out. But that's an even bigger if than the aforementioned, uh, I would say, Gonzalez and especially Andrew Heaney. So I would not really necessarily go near that. When it comes to the Texas Rangers, this is the team that you can definitely try to grab a couple people from because you have oh, excuse me, you have Matt Bush um or not Matt Bush excuse me um Dane Dunning who's pitching pretty well I don't know why I said Matt Bush he's a relief pitcher that's struggling on the team but Dane Dunning who's showing he can probably be a consistent fifth starter that can eat you some innings already at 83 and he's 87 K's at 29 baseball that would again fit into the category of just a not expected like a, a not big name I won't say no name, but not big name person like Joe Blaine. You get in the maybe or Joe and do well. Um, that's somebody that I could see. 
the Phillies potentially going for because he's not going to be very expensive. Um, another guy you could definitely go for from the team is one of the best relief pitchers um, now is Ian Kennedy. So you could potentially get him, bring him in. He's a veteran and hope he continues to have success here. Um, Josh Spores as a younger reliever at 27 is actually pretty solid uh, with his arm and his striking out ability to baseballs. Um, he has a mid four ZRA, but he's not a bad pitcher to be able to potentially pick up. And then somebody you could get, like I mentioned, with the Mike Myers of the world that struggle, how you can get somebody that's easy for a player to be named later just to try to mix in to hope uh, he can kind of get it going with you is Jordan Lyles. He's not a guy that I would say I would be confident if we get saying, okay, now we have him and we're going to pencil him into our rotation. He's going to be definitely better than Vince Velasquez and definitely better than uh, what Moore's done since coming back. But he's someone you could take a chance on. I guess if you want to go with those guys that you know you're going to have to give up pretty much little to nothing um, just to get them uh, from their team. Where the big name guy, obviously, from their team is Kyle Gibson. If the Phillies get Kyle Gibson, that would be great. And I, I really more see the Phillies, though, since in a great year you do have Noah, and if Willow keeps pitching like this, he's ace caliber. So even if Noah, but people I think he's definitely even in his best years of two, well, then you have a one anyway. So you don't necessarily need to go for those big, big name, like those big striding guys you have to give up a lot of guys for with how good Gibson's doing. Well, it seems like you're going to go more for those middle of the road guys, the Dane Dunnings of the world, the Roy Peraltas that are having a very good year, all the guys that we mentioned, the Andrew Heaney's of the world that mix into a rotation. Um, all those guys, because you don't necessarily need to give up the onslaught of prospects for the other people. So I feel like that's just the route the Phillies are going to go personally. And we got Kyle Gibson, though, as long as we don't give up something where we just completely drain our prospect system, which is why I don't see that happening. I would be fine with it, but I see the Phillies because they already don't have a great prospect system going with guys they know they're going to be able to bring in and not have to give up a plethora of guys from the prospect pool. But that has been this video for the going over some AL pitchers that I believe the Phillies could potentially target. There's some guys we obviously did not mention as well that they could potentially go after. I just wanted to keep this video under the 20-minute threshold, so I decided to just mention a few guys that I think would be good players, and there's other guys in there that you could obviously throw into the fire as well to be able to get and see how they do. So this is just, again, a rough list, nothing to quote me on. Kobe Allard, if the Rangers want to trade him as a young pitcher, is somebody I could see the Phillies being interested in, definitely uh, doesn't walk a lot of people and does good success controlling the strike zone and has a low 4 ERA already. But that's a guy that I think would be hard to get because he's a guy that they hope develops in their system. But there's definitely other guys that could be surprised. Guys, hope you all enjoyed this video of going over the AL pitching prospects for the Phillies potentially to get coming into the trade deadline that we went over for all of the potential struggling AL teams. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. On this Sports Fan News, I'm Joe Board. Please like, comment, and subscribe here as well as the Steel Flyers, Off the Wall Hockey, Pain, and the Radio and Pirlo Wisdom's channel. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy all the great baseball action coming into the deadline and then in the unofficial second half of the season after the deadline. Peace out, everybody.